everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Throws Nation. And before we uh, set up today's video, obviously just wanted to say, everybody be safe. We know that the coronavirus is a, a real threat right now. Now there is a lot of panic. And so be smart, wash your hands, do the things that you know that are gonna keep you safe. And we're gonna try to keep things as normal as possible. So, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about Matt Denny. Now, if you don't know who Matt Denny is, Matt Denny is one of the big rising stars in the world in the men's discus. At the age of 23 last year, he was six of the world championships in Doha. He is one of the most coolest, sharpest young guys I've met. Met Matt back when he was 19 and at 19 he threw over 65 meters and qualified for the Rio Olympics to represent Australia. The guy is an absolute talent. It was completely clear that this guy was going to be the future. He is one of the big stars in the sport. He had a ton of great things to say. We talked a little about training, throwing, and one section we talked about that was really interesting about how we would promote the throws. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Check it out. You obviously traveled and compete against these guys in multiple competitions. Yeah. How much do you get to know those guys and kind of become friends and stuff like that? Yes, yeah, see, it's I. Everyone, everyone's really good. Like everyone's very kind, very nice to talk to, very friendly. Even even though some some of them have language barriers, but I love the spirit of competition. If in the fact that you don't want to be beaten by him and he doesn't want to be beaten by you. And I think sometimes people get too too complacent and friendly with that. Like even even um, even at world champs and stuff, you know, everyone's oh well done, like great performance. Like, but he beats you, dude. Like, he's taken like he's taken an achievement away from you, and he's taken your prize money away from you, and he's you know, if you had that position, like, I think it's all well and good to be friends and all that sort of stuff, but you still need to have that sort of hunger to want to beat everyone else and have that it like yeah i don't know it's hard to word without saying like you're trying to be a um a tool about it like it's it's just having that will to win sort of thing not being complacent with oh you know great throw man like yeah good work dude but you know you just you've, you've overtaken me like i'm gonna i'm gonna get that position back or i'm gonna throw a pb or i'm gonna do better than that sort of thing so i would like to see that come back more into the competition like if, yeah yeah just just those like classic like say for example Bolton Gatlin like just that kind of thing like they they had that rivalry and everyone like sensed that tension and that gets people more excited in the sport like that's like one of the main parts of UFC like everyone enjoys fighting and watching that everyone loves watching the pre-fight and the games that go into it the tension between yeah you know like you and me man like let's go sort of thing I would love Dude, I'd love to have like a, like a, like a mock press conference where like everyone's like, like trash talking each other and just like making it not. So listen, that's yeah, a that's a good point. But just yeah, I, I give us an example of a pre-discus throw comp uh, press session talk shit session. Yeah. No, I just wait. Imagine if you like. Imagine if you walked in. Imagine if you walked in. And you just you know, say it's say it's finals time, right? And everyone's like obviously your right foot's trash denny yeah, yeah, yeah. your right foot's trash your, your block you call that a block yeah, exactly. i'm gonna block your ass tomorrow just like stuff like that and then like say if you had the final you had the top 12 right and you've got you know you got your press conference table and then you got weigh-ins like you know like for say sports yeah. bet you know you've got all your betting odds and all that it's like well all right, you know everyone's having their weigh-in what's their season's best all this sort of stuff you know if you want to trash talk you can just be like, you know, if someone asks a question, like you can just sort of like make small remarks. I think that'd just be so funny. Like, and it would make everyone sort of more interested. Like, oh, well, like, oh, well, style talk. Sh yeah, style. <laughs> exactly. That's what I mean. Like, style tra trash talking Frederick and all that sort of stuff. And like, I just think that would be either super funny or would actually like lift the performance and everyone would just be like, so in like so intense in competition that you just you would get that i don't know that just heightened will to win yeah. and that sort of like fight or flight it's like dude i need to perform now you know i've talked all this game or he's like he's talking about me and i've got to step up sort of thing i think that would be so sick it'd be so much more fun i don't know it's i just i reckon that's i like that idea yeah my wheels I mean, the wheels are turning yeah I mean, Wait, uh, pick, watch the future heritage uh, throws nation I, Question, you know, what do you think the sport can do better in order to improve 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you do to Okay. Yeah. So the question is, what do you think? You, what do you think the sport can do to bring more publicity? Because that's one of our goals yeah. with their Tatros Nation is to get more eyeballs, more attention. Yeah. See. Okay. So let's give some positives. So what I really liked about Doha was the fact that they gave visual representation, sort of like golf. They had your release speed. They had your release parameters. They had shot tracer. You know, that kind of thing. That was really good because that gave spectators more insight to that um, kind of thing. I think a bit more dynamics between the athletes, not being so lovey-dovey friendly sort of thing, like, oh, man, great work, you just beat me sort of thing. More that aggressive, you know, oh, well, it's Daniel Stalvis, Frederick Dacker's 1v1, or, like, you know, that sort of interest, pick a side, pick a team. You know, people always want to side with someone. Like, say, for McGregor. Like, you either love him or you hate him, but no matter what, someone's picking a side and everyone's going to watch because they either want him to win or they want him to lose. And it's just that, that kind of thing. I think bringing that more, like, direct attention to it. Um, and the other thing is, like, say, say, for example, I understand that track meets go for a while, you know, um, Diamond League are trying to cut it down to a certain time frame and all that sort of stuff for broadcasting. But when you when you think about it, cricket's one of the one of the most watched sports in the world. Tennis is one of the most watched sports in the world, and it goes longer longer than athletics. So I don't think it's the presentation time. I think it's the coverage. I think it's it's the coverage and it's the way that it's the way that the meet is. Um, yeah, like uh, schedule, how, how it's scheduled. So like, I think if you can condense it more, like you can, you can have so much stuff going at a track, mate, and condense it all together, and you could get most events in within an hour and a half. If we want to make the sport better and to get more people interested, if you, okay, well, here's a simple way to say it. If you're the best in the world, you should be able to perform on one throw. It's like golf, for example. Like if you go into golf and you warm up and you hit four terrible shots and then hit the fifth shot and be like, oh man, I'm pretty on today. Like, no dude, you're, you're, about, si you're about four over already. Like, you're not on. So, you, you know, if you, can't, if you can't get your best throw within four throws, you have an issue. Like, you're not performing at, if you're supposed to be the best in the world, you should be able to perform within four throws or within three throws. I'm not saying give it three throws, but you know, if you have eight athletes, top eight athletes in the world, Four throws, that's 45 minutes, if that, if you're correct in scheduling that. And then, you know, you can have that going, you can have pole vault. As soon as discus finishes, the lines are marked, jabs going, and shots going during it. You've got the 100 going, finish that, all right, 200's going. It's just, I think, need to be more immediate in the way it is, because I think if you can go, oh, this is happening, get the commentators more engaged. Say, like, Halle Throws Fest, like, you go there, man, like, the commentators are so into it. All the shot street meets, like, it's just hype city. Yeah. It's getting that involvement into the sport. So it's not a time base. it's a scheduling and um, and personality-based side of things. So, like... Football, like football, US football without yeah. commentating. Yeah, yeah it's oh, dude, not like, nearly the same. That's what I mean. Like, you... Well, what are, the, what are the quarters supposed to be? It's like 15 minutes, but the game's taking like three hours. Yeah, so, yeah, and, yeah, and, and I think that you also need to, with promoting the sport, doesn't matter whether it's within your country or whether it's within the world, like say for world athletics or whatever, put more attention on the personalities of the sport than the actual, you know, obviously you, you, you give attention to, people breaking world records, they're winning all the time consistently, blah, blah, blah. You know, give them that attention, they, des like, they deserve that, they're doing really well. But really promote the, the personalities of the sport because that's where people get super intrigued. Like, you know, everyone loved, everyone watched Bolt, not because, because of the fact that he was fast and he was a freak and he was just broke every world record it was, but he had a personality he really entertained people. He really gave, put a show on. And, you know, say for Daniel. Daniel, when he competes, puts on a show. When he won, sprints out. People love that. Like, meme city with that. Like, everyone circled that around. Put more attention to throwing. And 
Daniel as a personality. So if you do that, I think that's where the sport grows a bit more. People take more interest in that because of the personalities. And maybe even like a team-based side of things. Like obviously the Continental Cup where it was kind of a team-based thing. But maybe, I don't know, say say Christian Taylor, triple jump. Because like he's, mate, he's a great personality. He's awesome for the sport. He's team captain for team whatever. And then you've got Daniel as, or you know, whatever, or Danny Stevens or whoever it is as captain for another team. And you you draft your team. You draft your team and then you go to, like, you go to Stockholm Diamond League or you go to a Diamond League or you go to a comp or whatever it was, is. And it's you versus you, you versus you, you versus you. And it's like, it can be, um, yeah, sort of like an exhibition sort of thing. And I don't know, there's, I think there's a lot of ways you can do it. Not the way, the way that I look at, They tried that in the States, but I don't think they promoted it. And the way they did the draft and the number of the amount of athletes, it was kind of limited. I thought it was pretty, it seemed like it was really cool, but it's probably expensive. And they, there wasn't hyped or promoted quite enough. I find the way that they, with cutting the events for the Dime Leagues, is practically you're trying to save an endangered species by killing the endangered species. Like, the sport is the sport. Like, all the, the, all the events are part of the sport. You can't just take a, the events out. Like, the fact that Hamill was out because of insurance purposes or whatever it was or safety issues, I'm like, that's what the, the cage is for. That's not the issue. So, like, I could be wrong, whatever, but I just, I just think that there's a better way of going about it. And a lot of, a lot of sports are trying to... From, from, this is my, from my viewpoint. A lot of sports are trying to follow the big bash method so like you know um, Australia did the nitro series but then there wasn't much follow through with that and then they tried to do that continental cup team thing and then now they're trying to withdraw uh, reduce it back into an hour and a half of, um, of broadcasting I just I mean, I golf people go out and watch golf that takes forever yeah, like golf, Foot, golf prime example, US man. football takes forever yes. That's the other one I was thinking of. But we, we were talking about it when we were at CUSAC today. Like, you know, like you said, those street comps. Yeah. Like in, you know, the Diamond League final in uh, Brussels, yeah, right? Yeah, Brussels and Zurich. And yeah, Brussels. and it was like all the people are around. Like, it's super... It's wild. And so getting down, like, if you could watch the, the pole vault from around the pit, yeah. it would be amazing. Well, that's, right? like, that's the, what we're trying to do with, um, uh, like, what Queens, uh, Matt Lynch is trying to do at Queensland Athletics is... Um, like with some of the comps for Brisbane Track Classic this year, is if we get enough funding for it and we can get a better level meet for it, is bring the people in, like especially when you're at QSAC. QSAC's, you know, it's supposed to be for Commonwealth Games, Olympics, like pack footy games, like pack stadiums, but it's so big, like even if you had 5,000 people, it would look empty. So condense that, bring them in and bring them close, bring them around the cage and, you know, have that involvement, put some barricades around it. People would love that because when you... Especially like hammer, jab, disc, shot, sprint, like what am I talking about? All of it. When you're close and like near the athlete, you can see and understand the actual what is happening, like the force that. Yeah, yeah, like. Did you go? You stand like within five meters of someone throwing 80 meters and hammer. It's terrifying. Like the amount of force and power that they're holding and just letting go and pin perfect is incredible but when you're standing 60 meters away and you see this tiny little ball and someone just turning in a circle it's like oh cool all right what's next then you wait 30 minutes till the next event sort of thing it's you need that recurring continuous movement like that's and and yeah and like i said that that in that like team investment like picking a side that's why people love team sports is because they have a side they have an allegiance that's their family, that's their sort of like, yeah, that's their allegiance to whatever they support. It's hard to support an individual athlete like a team sport. So if you can kind of try and put the two together or create personalities where they can do that anyway, if they side or they, they like you or they hate you, at least you get more attention to it. So yeah, I don't know, it's just, just thoughts. It's all, and everyone has their opinions on it. And I don't know, it's, it's just frustrating because the sp- I don't want to see the sport decline, especially like now that I'm getting into it 
really well and like to the point where I want to be and the fact that like this would have been my first year where I could have done consistent diamond leagues but I just pretty much got the rug taken out of my feet um, is, is pretty frustrating. So. You got any, you got another question? Yeah, so those kind of rumors about an athlete's association, isn't it? One, I think it's weird that track and field doesn't have an association. Like an athlete's union kind of yeah, a thing? I, yeah. Because if all the athletes, if, if, if the athletes are collectively the sprinters and everybody said, well, we're not going to do anything unless all the events are in the Diamond League. Yeah. Like a strike almost. I think a good example of it is like, um, it's safe for, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure I have my facts right. If I don't, someone can fact check me in the comments or whatever. But um, So Cricket Australia, um, especially like a lot of the cricketers back in the day used to be paid pretty terribly and they didn't have an athletes association and they were paid terrible percentages like of total earnings. I think it was maybe maybe 6% if that of total earnings and like cricket was doing pretty well and then they created their athletes association and they immediately went up to like 12 and I think now they're at like mid 20s early 30s percentage of total earnings and like like the the low wage is like 200 grand and I, I think that's you need to separate it because I think you need to separate the two entities and the two powers because you have conflicting focuses one's trying to make money the other's trying to like you have the sport as a profession and continue the sport to for people later on to continue the sport and have a profession in that and also grow the sport and, and enjoy for what it actually is so and if the sport yeah. grows you know every truthfully right if you think about it the athletes need to make money and the the, the, organize, the organizers got to make money, otherwise they don't. It doesn't. Exactly. Matter. Yeah. So it's it's better promotion, well, I mean, and I think that, I think that's what's it. In the United States, you know, uh, the and I, and I would assume it's probably the same here. Uh, they will show the five thousand meters. I mean, it's like, or they'll show the fifteen hundred meters. And if anything, you're going to recap three throwing events and show first, second, and third, but they'll show a three and a half minute race, and you have no idea, and, and, and here's what I would always say, live, watching 15, world-class 1500 meter runners is insane. Yeah. They're like sprinting around the track, but they you don't see that when you televise it. You just see guys running. You, you don't have an idea of how fast they're moving. They're hauling ass. Yeah. So it's way more exciting to watch in person. So, but, they don't it's the other thing the throwing is more interesting to watch on tv so there i think that that's part of the problem they yeah, don't they I, don't know how to and I, they never I, present it right i love how i love how in the report when they say about how you know like within the surveys you know they haven't really depicted exactly how the surveys were done and who they've talked to and i mean they might have they might have released it later on but from what i saw they just said from the surveys that we done we had done from spectators and athletes these were the sports, uh, the events that ranked lowest on like popularity for the viewership and all that sort of stuff. And the way that I thought of it was, how the hell are you supposed to rate throwing on its popularity when you literally throw maybe, uh, show maybe six throws out of the actual entirety of the comp. Six and, throws if you're lucky. Yeah, exactly. And the, the amazing part about throwing is the, in, the in anticipation and the tension that can be created. If you look back at 2016 Olympics, right? Or 20, okay, no, 2016 was crazy. 2009 was insane. You know, you've got Hometown Hero, and they broadcasted this really well. You know, you've got Hometown Hero, um, Robert, and, you know, Mount Chias has gone out well, and you've got all these top throwers, and, you know, throw by throw, he's getting closer, he's connecting, he's finding it, and they're explaining that. You know, he's got this, he needs to find this, he needs to find that. You know, he has it there, does he? will he do it you know the moment of it you know giving that anticipation is the most insane part about throws like with sprinting and all that sort of stuff 10 seconds it's done but the anticipation over 10 minutes for a throwing comp and waiting for that see what can he do it can he connect it you know he's got that one like small minimal chance um and say for rio like 
in round six, I remember because I like I was, round yeah. six was phenomenal. I was That's why you can't cut it to four, dude. Yeah, I know. I was just, yeah, I was sitting back. I was sitting with um, Danny uh, Stevens' coach, Dennis. Dennis, so I was sitting there watching, and and we just because Christoph was like seven or six or something, and he's walking in, and I just said to Dennis, I was like, "Do you reckon he's going to get it? Do you reckon he's going to dig deep and do a Robert Harding in 2009?" He's like, "I don't know." I said, "Let's see." Just flushed it, and just seeing that, and like how many positions that changed over a period of one round. You know, Cooper went into third and was so excited that, oh my God, I've got an Olympic medal. And then, um, and then, what's his name? Um, Malachowski was in second. Yeah, well, Malachowski was in second, but who, um, the other German, um, uh, Jasinski. No, is it Jasinski? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, and then he popped out and went 67 and got third and then kicked, his, um, kicked Cooper out. I just like, just that crazy tension shifting. And Melichowski, I think, had gotten bumped you know, like Cooper. Leading. He was leading. And then and he got bumped by Cooper and, and Hardy, yeah. I think, and then he went back and got second. Yeah, it was insane. Right, it was, and then Daniel jumped up and got third. I remember I was, yeah, we it was, it was, it was awesome. After, um, after Christoph ripped that throw, we were just sitting back like, what is going on? And I remember, like the crowd went crazy for that than like some of the 100 meter races and like other performances that were going on that usually take over the night. But disc was like the main eye of the, of the night. So it needs to be broadcast better the, for the viewers to understand that. So, and I mean, like, well, it, like shot, shot got kept, but shot's insane. This year was a perfect oh example. God. Again, another reason why we can't cut throws. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, but look at look at this year in Doha, right? I mean, Krauser, Kovacs wouldn't have won, and Ryan wouldn't have gotten silver. So yeah, the guy exactly. who would have won if you cut it at four, but then and then it, the thing is, and though, those two, yeah, would have been it would Krauser would have got the silver, and Joe would have gotten like fifth place. But see, then the thing is though, when you look, I'm not saying we should cut throws, but I'm saying if you cut the throws. Now, the reason people are hanging on to six throws is because that's the way it's been for ages. But if you change it to four, the same effect would happen. Last round, I need to dig deep, you'd still get that same response. So it's sort of like yin yang. Like, I understand the same thing, but you know, you never know until you try it. So it's, I get your point, um, and it's, it's enjoy. Because it's I think that's part of the excitement. You know, exactly. and I mean, you could, you would still have that on four, but yeah. with that two more times, it's like if you still can yeah. hype it up. And you did have, you know, Krauser sitting in second, and people obviously know Ryan's the guy capable. Yeah. And then of yeah. course Joe comes in and just unloads just, and yeah. It's sad. I think, yeah. I, did you were, you were you there? Did you get to go watch dude, the car? Listen, this is the most annoying story I reckon I have for ages. So I had an assignment due that week, right? And I thought, I'm pretty buggered, I've competed, I've gone out a couple of times, I've had some fun with everyone, had some late nights, and I was just like, and I had an assignment due in a couple of days, and I was thinking, I mean, the ne I think it was the next day or the day after, and I hadn't started it. Um, just be, obviously, I'm in world championships, it's hard to get that started. And I said, no, I, like, I've got to stay home, I do want to go out and watch, but I'll stay back and I'll I'll just watch it online and I'll um, I'll finish this assignment. I got I had dinner, got back to my room, about like 150 words into my assignment, and next thing I know, I'm looking at the thing. Uh, hadn't broadcast yet, but I saw live results. 22.91. I'm like, do I go? Like, do I stay, or is that going to be it? And then I just sort of like slowly watch the comp, and then um, and then. Yeah, and then Krauser goes, and then um, Kovacs just drops it. And I just, I was so annoyed I missed that comp. I was so annoyed. Just so, dis still disappointed. Thanks for reminding See, that was a good lesson for the kids out there. You gotta do your homework, but. Do your homework. <laughs> do your homework first, and then, then go watch the best comp in the world. Oh. Yeah, that was insane. Last question or so. Yep. With the year, obviously it's the Olympic year. This is a huge year. This is the, this is what everybody's training for. Yeah. Um, what's your, now that they don't have Diamond League, I know that there was some additional meets added, correct? 
So there's discus in that second super yeah, league or whatever. Potential series. Yeah. yeah. So what's how, how, what's your meet schedule going to look like? You're opening up here in Australia in a couple of weeks, which is kind of early, right? Yeah, it's just more like it's not like we're focusing or anything compared to we didn't focus on last year, but we had to lighten off a little bit to try and get that qual because of the funding system and all that kind of thing. So. This year, like, literally still going to be in main load. Like, we haven't done any um, fast adaption work or anything like that, any speed work, any, like, peaking side of things. So just more to just come out, just compete, you know, get used to that environment again and practice. Practice makes perfect, right? Just getting that mental mental thing down pat, figuring out how you need to approach the comp and learn, okay, well, I'm doing this different in comp, why? and address that um yeah 20 year olds um and yeah and addressing that so yeah it's it's early but it's just more of a fun thing it's just treated like a training session and get some get some work done but um yeah so we'll do Oz domestic season stay in heavy training um and enjoy it and then we will so we'd be going to Europe yeah so hopefully do the Tokyo test event on the, I think it's like the 7th of May, um, which is in the Continental Series 1. The Continental Series 1 does not have discus for the first comp, so, but there's a, week, a test event the week before that does have discus. So I want to go try, go to Tokyo, just get a feel for it, environment, circle, stadium, all that, just get a try out. And then I'll go from there and I'll go straight to Europe for two weeks, um, stay in Italy, um, our... Um, uh, European Training Centre in Varese and I'll just base there get some training done get on my jet lag continue training and then uh, like main domestic comp start off will be probably Strava, and then two days later will be Stockholm Diamond League which is nice because like obviously Daniel and Sweden so hopefully we get into that still going to wait for confirmation but I think 6th should should be fine um, and then do a couple more comps um, within the continental series around the place um, and but I'll just like fly in and out of Varese, stay as there in Italy as my base because okay. um, everything's like within an hour and a half flight and I can just put in my backpack, have my disc, travel, do the comp, fly back um, and try and make some money out of the sport and um, and then do a few more comps, probably go to Halle and a couple of those German meets um, and then stay in Italy for a couple of weeks, train, then head straight to Wakayama um, in July, uh, early July for our pre-camp, um, which I think is like a week and a half. So stay there for a week and a half, get used to everything, and then go into Tokyo, um, Olympic Village, and keep prepping, and sort all my stuff out, get and peak, compete, throw well, and then um, stay that rest that week, like, you know, enjoy the Olympic Village, continue to train, but enjoy it and have fun, and then finish off the season with a couple of comps, hopefully come home in around September, um, as there's a couple more comps after Tokyo, and then, um, yeah, so I'll pretty much be away for six months, so, see if, yeah, five or six months. So, it'll be a long time away, but it's just, this, the the high end of the sport is in, a, in, in Europe, so... It's where you gotta go. If you wanna enjoy the sport and you wanna be in you wanna be in the action like over there, um, you have to go over there. So it's just one of those things, you gotta sacrifice um, being home with family and all that sort of stuff and you know, get the job done and, and but it you know, it's a sacrifice but it also is you know, if you yeah, like I said, if you wanna enjoy the sport, that's where it's at, that's where the comps are at. That's where that it, that all is, so yeah. Hit me. Goal for what's your what's your uh, what do you want to place at the Olympics? I know what you want to place. What, know. Are you, what are you thinking? How do you feel? What do you think you can do? To be honest, I don't really. From what from the what the last three months have shown of training, I really have no idea what my limitation is. So like, yeah, like I said, I'm in heavy training, but I'm throwing further than what I did when I was in peak in September. So it's like. So yeah, and I didn't, and I still didn't find that throw then. So do I have, like, to me, I'm thinking, well, if I had that good throw lurking there that I just didn't connect, well, what do I have now if I connect it with what I am 
going to be in the next whatever. So I, I really don't know what is possible and what the limitation is. I, I think I'd be silly to put a limit on it because like because I'm young. So I just I just want to go. I always the thing I work on with my sports like is is we when we perform when we go to comps, it's not about the distance. About I, it's about performing and being the athlete that you want to be and like the athlete I always want to be is that athlete that shows up first round go time and you know no matter what whether you're feeling sad tired perfect off whatever it is whatever feeling you just you you be the athlete that you want to be in the moment and perform um no excuses um so I think if I if I do that then I think anything's possible. So, and and like I said, just know when to find that extra gear when you need it, and step up when the opportunity presents itself. So, yeah, I just it's very freaking far this year. That's that's the goal. So, yeah, yeah. Well, man, thank you. Dude, oh, good chat. I really, good really time. appreciate you guys. Yeah, really no. appreciate you doing this, and it was great to hang out. It took four years to finally catch up together. So, yeah. <laughs>